Hey team, my name is John and welcome back to the channel. When I was growing up, my family moved a total of two times, which means that twice I had the excitement of walking into a brand new house for the first time. I got to explore all the new spaces, I got to claim my room and make plans for how I would organize it or where I would put my bunk bed. And as much as moving can be really hard as a kid, having to start at a new school or make new friends, moving into a new house can also be really exciting. And even when I grew up, I still remember when Sweet Bear and I moved into our first apartment together. And all of a sudden, I didn't just have one room in our house, I had multiple rooms. Well, actually, we did live in New York City, so it was more like two rooms, maybe one and a half. But still, we searched for that home ourselves. We paid the security deposit and the rent ourselves. We furnished that home ourselves. Whether you're a kid or an adult, I think there's something special about home for all of us. And even though maybe the house that we grew up in or our first tiny glorified studio apartment in New York wasn't our dream home, it was still home for us. But I don't think I really appreciated just how much home meant to me until I started traveling for work. Many of you know that in addition to making YouTube videos, a big part of the work that I do includes traveling around the country to teach at different churches and conferences and camps. And before I say anything, let me clarify. I absolutely love what I get to do. And I love the people that I get to go and visit. I have been lucky enough that that the people who host me when I travel do an amazing job of making me feel welcome, making me feel comfortable and as at home as I possibly can. I love you all. But even with all of that, there is nothing like the moment when I arrive home and I see Sweet Bear and Buckets once again. Because more than home is a physical space or the room that you grew up in, home is a place where you belong. You know where everything is. You know the rules. Everyone knows you and you know them. You don't have to pretend. It's hard to describe the feeling, but when you walk through the front door of your home, you just know, you just know that you belong here. And this is the parallel that the Apostle Paul is drawing at the end of Ephesians chapter 2 that we've been looking at in this series. In verse 19, he writes, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. In this series, we have been looking at what it means to experience and live in what we've been calling true newness. And we've talked about whether it's a new way of living or a new identity or a new, more inclusive humanity. Jesus is the key to entering in and experiencing experiencing this kind of newness. And in these verses, Paul is continuing his case by saying that in Jesus, not only do we have an example of a new way of living, not only do we receive a new identity, not only are we brought into a new, more diverse family, but in Jesus, we also have a new home. Paul's claim here in these verses is very simple that when you are a follower of Jesus, you belong in the house of God. And while that claim is very simple, if you dig down into it, it's also extremely powerful. Because while some of you watching may be able to relate to my positive experience of home growing up, others of you cannot. Many of you perhaps have never truly felt that sense of belonging, that sense of walking into a space or seeing the faces of certain people and just knowing that you belong there. Others of you, maybe you felt like you did have that at one point, but then somewhere along the line because of a loss or maybe a broken relationship, 
you felt that you lost that sense of home, that feeling of belonging. Or maybe for you, you grew up in an area or in a city or in a school where no one else really looked like you, and so you never really felt at home. But regardless of what maybe your current or past experience has been, regardless of what your family of origin looked like or maybe didn't look like, Paul's point here is both clear and powerful, that even if you feel like you don't belong anywhere in the world, in Jesus, you belong to God. When you say yes to Jesus, and you begin to experience his new way of living, and you begin to enter into his new humanity, you find a new home. But there's more. In the final verse of Ephesians chapter 2, Paul says, And in him you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his Spirit. In other words, when you say yes to Jesus, not only do you belong in the house of God, but you actually become the house of God. Before Jesus died on the cross and before he ascended into heaven after his resurrection, he sat with his disciples and promised that after him, the Holy Spirit would come as a helper and an advocate. But not only that, but the Apostle Paul in one of his letters to the Corinthians states that that same spirit actually dwells, lives, belongs, in us. So when you have times where maybe you feel lost, or you feel alone, or that God is distant, or even that God has left you and abandoned you altogether, remember the promise that we have, that you belong in the house of God, and that the presence of God actually lives within you. Because when God is your new home, and when you allow yourself to become His, you're actually never alone. Hey team, thank you so much for watching this message. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have enjoyed this entire series, All Things New. We are done, we have wrapped it up, but don't miss it because next week, we're gonna start a brand new series that we're calling DTR, Define the Relationship. We're gonna be talking about the relationships that define us most. We're gonna be digging into that all through the month of February. I hope you are excited. I know all I am. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out, as I normally do, to my email list. This is sort of my last plug for this this month. If you're interested in maybe a few books or a few resources that are going to help you dive a little bit deeper into much of the material that we cover on this channel, please, you can go to the link in the description, sign up for my email list, one email a month, just with some resources that'll help you move forward and go deeper, I hope, in your faith journey. That is all I have for you right now. I will see you all next week. I love you all. Keep being awesome.